Two strangers walked into a bar, and they walked out with their own radio show. I've never been with a man before. Looks like I'm the boss now. He's Derek. The world is your oyster. Just shit on it. She's Romaine. I've got a handful of shit. It's Derek and Romaine. 2.0, bitches! Well, there we have it. Derek here along with Romaine. So glad to have you with us here for another fine episode of our show. And uh, our long, hot summer is winding down. What? Well, it's Labor Day week. And so, you know, this is the time when the weather starts to turn a little bit cooler. And uh, after the hot, hot, hot we've had all summer, the hot and dry, uh, glad uh, to have some uh, cooler weather ahead of us. Although it will be a little sizzling later on in this hour as uh, singer Kevin Aviance is with us. Oh, Uh, yes. I'm excited to talk to him. He's got lots of fun things happening right now. Uh, The biggest thing, of course, being sampled in uh, Beyonce's uh, Renaissance album Yes, uh, that uh, popped out um, earlier this summer. And uh, the gays were sizzling all over that album Mm -hmm. all summer long. Uh, Me included. (laughs) I know Romaine is not a gigantic Beyonce fan, but... I know. It is uh, quite a delightful uh, album, and uh, gay, gay, gay. Have you enjoyed this summer? Well, it's been a little on the warm side for me. It really has. Yeah, a little consistently warm. Uh, Oh, this global warming is going to kill us all. (laughs) I mean, I started wearing shorts this summer, Derek. I know. We're all surprised to see your legs after all this time. I know. No one more so than me. Well, it's important for a woman to show her shapely ankle whenever she can. Do I have a shapely ankle? I I don't know. Do you think your ankle is shapely? Not particularly. I mean, it's ankle-shaped. I uh, I think I have a nice ankle, but it's thin. You do, thin. actually. You do have a nice ankle. I have thin ankles. Mm. It makes me worry. Uh, it's probably the one why... day they just might snap. Yeah, it's probably why I didn't go into figure skating. Also, you know how clumsy I am and how afraid I am that I would fall off the skates and skate right over my own hand. I could see you doing that. I know. This is why I haven't done it. But, you know, my friend, uh, Johnny Cankles, uh, he uh, was a figure skater. And, but uh, that's because he had cankles. Well, I mean, I he had big, meaty, thick can- uh, cankles that would support his body when he was uh, leaping through the air yeah, and yeah, yeah. landing. Mm-hmm. You know, with his double axles, triple axles. I An don't even axle? Know. How many axles can a person have? A car has four. I thought I had two. Two axles. Or two axles. <laughs> wow, we're really car people. <laughs> Lord help us. Lord anyway, help us. Don't skate and drive. By the way, did you know that the axle is actually like the name of the person who invented the jump? No. I thought it was somehow related to like you're spinning on an axis or you're landing on an axis. Oh, no, I didn't know axle. that. No, no, what is the, the cow tow one named after? Someone named cow? Uh, maybe. Mm. Okay. I, I'll be honest. I don't know an enormous amount about figure skating. I know so, nothing about figure almost skating. Nothing. All I know is I like to see the pretty girls. I like to see uh, people flipping through the air. I think it's fun. It's I exciting. It. It's really thrilling when they fall down, though. But then I feel bad. I'm like, oh, I'm celebrating their falling. Why would anyone celebrate somebody falling? Because it's kind of cool to watch. Like, it's like, oh, oh, ah. It's like, it's, it's exciting. Because you get to watch somebody's hopes and dreams destroyed mm-hmm. right in front of your very mm-hmm. eyes. Kind of. Maybe you're not a good person. Did I you never ever think said about I that? was. Okay. I, in fact, I think after this summer, it's been determined that I'm not. I, I think uh, that is the case. Now, Romaine, uh, maybe this is why somebody uh, uh, was uh, punishing you by throwing your pig around. Why was this pig on the floor? Oh. Well, uh, earlier today, uh, JB and I were working on a um, uh, project here in the studio. <sighs> That sadly went bad. Oh. Yeah. We were trying to uh, fix some stuff, and uh, it didn't work out very well for us. So... (laughs) So you had to throw the stress pig around? Uh, The pig fell off the table. I threw a lot of things around the studio today. Cables, um, power adapters, more cables, I headphones. Some stuff got thrown around because I was getting pissed off in the studio today. But we finally... We developed a workaround, and uh, that's all there is to it. I don't think it's healthy to throw things. 
Maybe not, but sometimes it's what makes you feel better. <laughs> sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and in this case, I had to throw some shit to make myself feel better because things were not working the way they should have, and it was annoying me. And uh, so that's just how it went. I just had to throw some shiz around. Now I feel better. All is right in the world. You know what I mean? You're like, I don't know about that. Well, I just, I, as a management thing, I don't think throwing things is a good idea. But Would this you like me little, to throw that pig at you? Well, no, please don't. But I have it in my hand, so I don't know how you'd be able to get to me to throw it. I mean, it, it is but, a stress pig. Right. That's the thing. Is it one of these little, like, you squeeze it, stress Yeah, you uh, choke the little things. pig until he's dead. It would be cute if it, like, made a little oink when you squeezed it. You know, like a, like a dog toy. Oink, oink, no. oink. But uh, it doesn't. It just... Sits there cheerfully, happy face. I know, while you and I just want to smash it, smash it, smash it. Because it's so happy. Hammer fist. You have a lot of issues with like um, pent up rage. Yes, because mm-hmm. you know these figure skaters fall down, and then that makes you happy. And then the happy stress pig, you just want to squeeze it until it's smushed. Yes. Uh, that's. Uh, should we talk about this in your therapy session today? It's funny. Um, I had a conversation with my best friend today as I was coming to work. And my best friend was like, um, baby, honey, sweetheart, I'm very worried about you. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean you're worried about me? Whoa. And she's like, I feel like you might need to go to therapy. <laughs> and I'm like, I literally was just at the therapist's office. It didn't do shit for me. And she's like, yeah, you, you, might, need to, you might need to go back. She's like, I'm very worried about uh, your rage because she also noticed that I had some rage. And uh, she's like, I'm very worried about your rage levels right now. And I'm worried. I'm worried. And I said, I'm sorry. I don't care. I shouldn't have to deal with my rage if I don't want to. This does not sound healthy at all. No, it really... Do you uh, think it's uh, the heat of the summer has been making this worse? I do think the heat of the summer... Listen, it has been a bit of a stressful summer mm-hmm. you know my child did drugs uh my wife is unsupportive i basically had to retire from being a parent because i couldn't deal with it anymore uh yeah there's been some stress this summer and um you know my lawn died because we didn't get any rain <sighs> there's other stuff i can't even get into all Do the other stuff a hug no actually what i really need is a nap this is how I deal with my stress when it becomes Sleeping? too much. I go to sleep. Okay, that I might sleep be a sign away. of depression. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe I went home from work last night and maybe I just went straight to bed. Literally. Wow. But, you know, I t- sometimes what I just need is like, I just need peace and quiet and a good solid nap. And then I feel better. The more I sleep, the better I feel. Well, sleep does help you feel better. Yes. And mm-hmm. uh, other other healthful activities can also make you feel better. Remember my house was overrun by mouse my by mices and mices and mouses over all the summer? Right. That's so, I well, mean, how many did we kill by, by we I mean, how many did the cat kill this summer? There must have been at least 7. That does seem like a high mouse A count. lot. A lot. <sighs> but no, I'm not at all stressed out or uh, Full of I'm rage. worried about your like blood pressure. Should is be. that a is that a thing? Probably, probably. Have you been to a doctor ever to to have your blood pressure checked? Well, Are I've you worried about that? Got a blood that? pressure t- machine at the house. I check it every once. So I, Iris is the one that has the high blood pressure, and she's supposed to check it every day, but she does not. But I check mine every once in a while. I'm fine. What a youthful thing having a blood pressure cuff at home. Iris's doctor told her she had to get one. Okay, so she did, and then she never uses it. I use it more than she does. And your blood pressure is fine. Fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, with all my this rage, anxiety worried... levels, maybe not so much. Okay. Maybe not so much. Pretty sure my therapist is like, "Can we get you some anxiety medications?" And I usually say, "No, no, my best friend takes care of that." <laughs> <laughs> and by being out. a supportive friend. Yeah. By being a supportive friend, she is my anxiety medication. I call her, I rave, rant, and rave, and carry on, and then I feel much better. 
Well, that is a good She's way. She's a to, very good supportive friend. That's a good way to deal with your uh, stress and anxiety. Yes, for sure. I know. I, why do you think I call her? Poor Kristen. <laughs> she's she's too good to me. But anyway, summer's almost over. But you know the only good thing about summer almost being over, Derek. And this really is. So I've been for several months now. I've been counting down the days uh, to the next DNR cruise because I do I do find cruises. They really lift my spirits in a good way. And I get to see all my friends, and I really enjoy that. And I get to see my other wife, which I also really enjoy. So I have been counting down the days, and we're just, we're like a month away from our next DNR cruise. So that part makes me feel really good. Yeah, it's going to be my sixth cruise this year. No. (laughs) Yes! Yes! Is that true? (laughs) Uh And it'll be your fifth. (laughs) <laughs> really because it feels like i've only been on two. Oh wait no uh fourth right wait. one uh three it'll be my uh fifth sorry so it'll be my your fifth. fifth and my fourth and your fourth yeah. Yeah, yeah that feels right although i gotta be honest it seems like a lot but uh, yes it does seem like a lot when you say it but i feel like i could have done three or four more i feel like i could do a cruise every other month Honestly, legitimately. I feel like I need a cruise every other month because of my stress levels are just very high. Well, there's definitely more <laughs> cruising ahead in our future. Yeah, yeah, Romaine yeah. and I have talked behind the scenes about this. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we have determined is uh, when it comes to cruises, more is more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we'll be doing more of them. Uh, mm-hmm. But we also get we keep getting offered like uh, behind the scenes, like preview cruises and that kind of ah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're definitely going to be doing more of those. But like one of them is just going to be a short like a weekend thing. So that'll be fine. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it will just be just enough cruise. OK, we'll get a little buffet. We'll have yep. a little relax by the pool. Sure. And then uh, it'll only be like four or five days. Yeah, Boom, yeah. We're in. We're out. We're yep. fine. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. I agree. Uh, One of the other things that people really look forward to uh, in fall is uh, fall TV. Uh, You know, show returning shows. Yeah. And uh, some uh, old time favorites. And, you know, this uh, this fall, there's going to be a uh, a new Celebrity Jeopardy show. Oh, are you going to be on it? I am uh, not going to be Being on the it. gigantic celebrity that you are, I feel like you're you're more than qualified. I feel like you're lashing out. That I'm feeling your rage right now. Mm-hmm. Do you need to squeeze this stress pig a little more? It's not rage. It's support. So it's support. I feel, I'm supporting you. That doesn't sound supportive. I feel like you could win Celebrity Jeopardy. I think I could do well on Celebrity Jeopardy, and yep. I would like to go on Celebrity Jeopardy. And I just you should worry that I am not a big enough celebrity. You shouldn't worry about that. You're a big enough celebrity. Thank you. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. You would do an awesome job on Celebrity Jeopardy. I'm not even being mean right now. I'm actually being authentically kind. Nice. Supportive, even. Anyway, I think you'd be great on it. And they're going to need a lot of celebrities if they're going to make a regular thing of it, right? Yeah, so I believe it's going to be a primetime uh, show. And Are you ready for primetime, though? Are I am really? ready for I What happened? I, five seconds ago, you said I was a big enough star. Now that it's primetime on ABC, Romaine's like, whoa, whoa, Calm maybe down. you're not that big of a no, star. No, you could do primetime. Gosh. I was just I was just questioning for a second. I'm sorry. You could All do right. it. You could do it. Uh, but uh, now that they've announced some of the uh, people who will be on Celebrity Jeopardy, Are I feel like they're way bigger stars than I am, Uh-oh. so probably not. All so, right, so like who? Uh, uh, Michael Sarah, uh, Constance Wu, uh, Patton Oswald. Uh, they're getting some decent people. Although okay, of the f- three you just mentioned, I knew one of them. Well, you know, are you curious which one I knew? I think you knew Patton Oswald. That's the one I knew. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who the other ones are. Wow. Should I? Well, I mean, you didn't watch Arrested Development nope. that Michael Sarah was on, but he was in uh, a bunch of movies that you probably saw. Okay. At some point. Okay. Anyway, uh, I do think that, uh, well, Constance Wu, she might be able to beat me, but I could probably beat the other two. You think so? Probably. Okay. But this is this is the thing about Celebrity Jeopardy. Is one, I do want to go on the show. Yeah. But I, I want to go on Jeopardy in general, but I don't think I could win regular Jeopardy. So I feel like my best chance of actually is Celebrity Jeopardy. Be winning is Celebrity Jeopardy as long as I'm not up against too bright of a star. 
because sometimes they get people on and they just are playing for charity. They're not super bright or they don't know a lot or they are not Jeopardy super fans. So they don't really know how the game is played. They're not going to be they're not going to be good at it, even if they're smart. Okay. So I really got to I got to game it out. But there are some celebrities who are very good Jeopardy players and I would not want to go up against them. But uh, other people who are whatever, fine. Like I could probably take Michael Sarah. Okay. I bet you could. I feel confident in you. You're very smart. But the other side of it is I, I'm pretty good at home at regular Jeopardy. But when they do celebrity Jeopardy, they often have uh, more uh, easier categories and more entertainment themed categories and a lot less like right. the other hard stuff that they have on the regular Jeopardy. So anyway, gotcha. But I would like to go on the show. If it becomes a regular thing and they have to churn through a lot of celebrities, that I might have a chance. Like if they need a hundred celebrities a year, then it'll start getting real thin and sad. Right. When when they start announcing some real housewives going on Celebrity Jeopardy, then I know. Get my get my agent on it. I'm getting on that show. Right. Because I could take virtually any real housewife, please. That you could. I mean, they're richer and more famous than I am, but, but I could definitely, definitely not smart. No, but I could definitely beat them on Celebrity Jeopardy. Yeah, Come yeah. on. Come on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, also this fall, uh, apparently uh, Law and Order is uh, doing something that they have never done before in the history of uh, the Law and Order franchise. Right. They are having a uh, crossover of all three of the shows, the current uh, Law and Order Special Victims Unit, Old school, original recipe, Law and Order, and uh, organized crime, the one that Stabler is on. And uh, they are going to have some kind of uh, murder that turns into a sex crime that turns into an organized crime. And it's going to cross over all three uh, of the shows on September 22nd. Mm. Okay, then. All right. I mean, there's you know more crime in the Law and Order franchise than there actually is in New York City. but But that's okay. It makes New York City seem so safe. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It no, makes the opposite doesn't. seem true. I actually think New York City is terrifying right now a little bit. Well, it's the kind of New York City I like. I like New York City when it's a little bit terrifying. I don't like New York City when it's completely safe. Come to New York and join us here in a month. Thank you. Because yeah, 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 Romaine no, you is telling you it's terrifying. I mean, a little bit. I'm not going to pretend it's not. There's a few terrifying things about New York City right now that were not terrifying, say, five years ago. But it's what gives New York City character. I've always liked New York City when it's a little... Yeah, like, if you, if you aren't a little scared of New York City, I think something's wrong. You should be a little bit scared of New York City. Well, New York City is intimidating. I think people should be intimidated by New York. No, I think they should be scared. Ugh. Well, that doesn't encourage anybody to come here. But no, then again, I mean, listen, I only want the brave to come here. I don't want a bunch of pussies to come here because then New York City becomes like Disneyland. What? No, 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 no. I want people with some grit to come here. Whatever happened to interesting qualities? You're, you're tired, you're poor, you're huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Well, you're not going to breathe free in New York City. You're going to breathe in some smog, possibly. Smoke blowing around, the smell of urine. You're going to breathe in all of those things. No? Is that not what you're going to breathe in? Derek, when was the last time you walked down this? Yes, you're going to breathe in any number of things in New York City. It's New York City! The phone lines are not open. Give us a call now. And tell us if you're afraid of New York City based on Romaine's Yelp review. I love New York City. I like it edgy. That's all I'm going to say. Well, we have so many. It's been a very busy tourist summer uh, this year. Oh, my God. The tourists are back like crazy. They're everywhere. They are. But it's a good thing. We need them back so the Broadway shows can continue. And then you won't notice how terrifying it is because there's too many people around. Well, I do like that. I do like it when the terror is kind of in plain sight, but a little hidden. 
You know what I mean? Like you'll see a you'll see like a bunch of park benches, and most of them will be covered with people having like a lovely afternoon lunch, and Mostly. then there intermingled in there will be a passed out somebody. So maybe it's a little too much sun. Sometimes it, the city gets to people. They need to take a rest. <laughs> Fold I out. Feel like I need to take a rest. Is it nap time yet? No. <sighs> maybe I need to go. Maybe I need to go back to Rage Romaine. I don't think so. I I find Rage Romaine to be very disturbing. Me too. <laughs> uh, what can I say? It's just who I am these days. The summer was hard on me, Derek. The summer was hard on me. I need a vacation. I need to go somewhere, relax, sit on a beach, drink a beer, relax, hang out with my friends, relax, maybe take a nap. Wow, those sound like big plants. Well, <laughs> Romaine, you know, uh, they maybe are big plants. Thank you very much. Maybe this will make you happy. Okay, tell me what's gonna make me happy. Uh, so uh, you know how uh, 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 doctors and scientists are always trying to encourage people to be healthier, do healthier things. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but one of the things that people have a hard time evaluating is how actually healthy something is, how good for you something is. Because some things seem oh, better for you than others. You mean like when they used to say, eat lots of eggs, it's good for you, it's going to make your heart strong. And then five minutes later, they're like, oh, don't eat too many eggs, it's going to make your cholesterol go through the roof. Like that? And then they took that back. And then and they, they took like, that back and they're like, oh, JK, no, don't eat the eggs. Well, it's hard. Sometimes <laughs> with, with food science, it is very hard to determine... Uh, you know, correlation versus causation. Sure. And so, like, with the thing with eggs and cholesterol is that eggs do naturally have a lot of cholesterol in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, there was a belief that, oh, well, if you eat a lot of cholesterol, then you will have high cholesterol. Because sure. it seems on paper that that would seem, uh, you know, like it would be true. You know, you you have cholesterol and then you eat you eat it and then you have cholesterol in your body. Like that's, it came into your body from the thing. But it turns out that uh, a lot of our uh, cholesterol is not necessarily from natural sources of food and our body produces its own cholesterol too right. based on other factors. Plus, uh, I'm sure that lots of people who were eating, I mean, they weren't, um, you know, Gaston and Beauty and the Beast. I don't think they were eating uh, two dozen eggs a day. Well. That's definitely not healthy. Well, Unless he your name is Iris Fernandez Fernandez, and then that's literally what you do. Well, he was roughly the size of a barge. <laughs> anyway, uh, but this is about a food compass. So the food compass, uh, basically, it evaluate, it gives uh, food roughly a point system so you can determine how healthy or not healthy it is okay. on this, this spectrum of uh, food to help you, like... Isn't that basically what Weight Watchers does? Well, this is a, this is, that's different because that's like you have an X number of points per day. This is about a, a healthiness scale. So on, like, a range of 1 to 100... One thing might be a 68 and one thing might be a 64. Okay. So if what you want is to incrementally improve, uh, you know, what you're consuming, you know, you want like a higher number, right? So okay. look for things that are, say, above 65. Sure. Okay. Uh, but in this case, uh, when they put together this uh, food compass, uh, ice cream was put ahead of an everything bagel. Yes. So apparently ice cream, according to the food compass, is healthier than an everything bagel. What? How is that even true, though? I mean, ice cream is very unhealthy, I would think. And I would think an everything bagel, it has everything on it. So therefore, it's got to have like some grains and stuff that would make it kind of healthy, right? Well, a lot of it depends on... Uh, again, what you, you know, what you're using to determine it, because like ice cream does have a lot of sugar, obviously, uh, but yes. a fairly plain, simple ice cream, you know, one of these like five, six ingredient ice creams where it's just, you know, cream, a little egg, some sugar or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it definitely uh, can have uh, high calorie content, but it also, you know, will have uh, quite a bit of calcium uh, and, uh, you know, might have other. Uh, nutrients that are good for you. And a bagel is a very dense, basically, piece of bread. Uh, depending on the bagel that you're eating, it might be like eating an entire loaf of bread. So, you know, it's going to have a lot of carbs to it, but so also are you not a lot of. Is morning bagel is bad for me? Well, it depends on the bagel. Some of them are like have more 
whole grains in them and everything, but you know, it might end up just being a lot of empty calories. And you might think, oh, it has some seeds on it, whatever. It must be healthy. It's got raisins in it. First of all, if your everything bagel has raisins in it. It doesn't have everything bagel. I eat a cinnamon raisin bagel for breakfast. Okay. Well. With a very large pat of butter. But have you looked at the like ingredients I'm to see? The ingredients. Why would I want to look at that? I don't want to know. Are you just telling me that my bagel is going to kill me? I think you just told me my bagel is going to kill me. I think you just told me I can't eat bagels anymore. Why would you do that? Nobody Why would you ruin a bagel for me? Nobody told me that. I love my that. morning bagel. And now I can't even have it. You've ruined it. You. Great. Way to go, Derek. You've ruined my morning bagel. Un. Unbelievable. First of all, you're not exactly a healthy eater. So I don't, I don't know, know why, why you're, you're talking about those four cookies. I needed them for my mental health. You had four. I ate the, all, of, all them. Four of them. I ate all four of them because I needed them for my mental health. All right. Well, a little background here. So uh, AJ's wife, Gina, baked some cookies. To make me feel better about my sucky feel life. Better. And then I ate way too many of them. Uh, at the office. Mm-hmm. I ate like four of them. Yeah. I was like, ah, uh, because the box was just sitting right there. Just giving them anyway. At the end of the day. There were like four left in the box. There were box. four left. And, and Romaine goes, oh, I'm going to... And, and I put them in the fridge. Yeah. And, was, and I, why so did the you mouse take them home? Them. But she goes, no, 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 no. No, I no, wanna... I'm not taking them to those bitches. They don't deserve cookies. They're horrible. My family is horrible. I'm not treating them with cookies. No. Anyway, so we left the cookies here overnight. And then um, by the time I got into work today... I ate them all. They were already, already gone. I needed them for my mental health. Self care. That's right. Oh, that's right. I'm trying to take better care of myself, Derek. Don't you know? Now I can't have bagels anymore. Derek has ruined the bagel for me. I guess I'll have to go back to donuts. Sorry. Well, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe uh, this will make you feel better. So, okay. uh, Chipotle. Yes. Recently uh, was celebrating National Lemonade Day. You know how every day there's like... Lemonade Day? I, I agree. I Everything's Ugh. got a day now. Okay. Lemonade Day. Got it. Uh, by releasing a limited edition uh, candle that's got like lemonade. Okay. But the Chipotle uh, uh, candle that smells like lemonade uh, is designed to look like their water cup. Because they were making reference to people requesting a cup for water at right. their locations and then filling it up at the at the soda fountain with lemonade. Of course they were. People are horrible. Yeah, but the, but Chipotle was letting everybody know. We know we you know do. what you we do. Know, we know what you do. Yeah. Anyway, here's a here's a water cup that's a uh, candle that smells like lemonade. That's cute. That is cute. I do like it when businesses uh, like Have a sense of humor. when they well yeah and then when they make like something related to their business that is not at all related to their business. Like when KFC did this with their eaten pants and with their candle that smells like fried chicken. Like, I like all that stuff. I do. So, all right. I can get behind this. Good for you, Chipotle and your lemonade candle. I think that's nice. Makes me want lemonade now. Is lemonade okay? Am I allowed to have lemonade, or yes. is that going to kill me too? No, no, no. It's nice at the end of it. Like, uh, so what a refreshing uh, thing at the at the summertime. A nice uh, lemonade, of course. I like a I like a peach lemonade where it has like little chunks of peaches at the bottom. Mm, that's good. I get that at the Charlie's in the mall. Oh, I really like that kind of lemonade. Lemonade with like a little bit of peach juice and a little bit of peaches pieces at the bottom. Oh, it's very tasty. Very sweet though, but tasty. Mm. When I go out to L.A., uh, there's a place that has, like, a strawberry lemonade. I like a strawberry lemonade. But they ha- it has, like, chunks of strawberry in it, and then it, like, clogs up the straw. Yeah. They- See, this is why I like the peach one, because they chop them into, like, teensy tiny little squares. It's kind of like having bubble tea, because there's, like, a little surprise at the bottom. That every once in a while, you get, like, a little piece of, of peach, and it's just tasty. But I like the strawberry lemonade as well. I like to get that at the uh, Ye Old Wendy's. Yeah, because, you know, I don't drink soda anymore. So that's like a real challenge when I go out to like fast food. What do I get instead of soda? Sometimes it's a lemonade. Which is more exciting than a bottle of water. Probably. Well, given how filled with rage you are, I assume you're going to be lemonading again real soon. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, finally, uh, a scientist uh, recently caused an uproar in social media because uh, you know how we have this uh, new uh, James Webb telescope that's taking these uh, deep photos of outer yes. space that oh, are really cool. stunning. Really uh, cool. Yeah, we've had some beautiful like uh, spiral galaxies mm-hmm. and uh, recent uh, gorgeous, stunning photos of Jupiter and that kind of thing. Well, he uh, posted in social media a picture from deep space to wow everyone with a detail uh, from the James Webb telescope. Uh, and people got very excited. And then he had to admit it wasn't actually a picture from the telescope. It was a slice of chorizo. <laughs> Why? Why would he do such a thing? I mean, I think he was trying to see uh, how gullible, gullible we are. people might be. Very. The answer is very. Also, I don't know what the universe looked like five trillion years ago. How am I supposed to know it didn't look like a chorizo? How do we know it doesn't look like a chorizo right now? This is the thing. How do we not know? We don't. You know that NASA released the the uh, creepy sounds of the black hole, and honestly, it sounds... Just like the audio mixing from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. You know what? Maybe whoever did the audio in that movie 50 years ago knew what space actually sounded like. Terrifying. Terrifying. So there you go. There you have it. And Romaine was already afraid and full of rage. Well, maybe... uh, I'm really afraid. Maybe hopping into the Wayback Machine and chatting with Kevin Aviance about the good old days of New York City oh, in the 90s. Yeah. And uh, what it's like to find out that Beyonce has remixed you. Oh, that's big. That's big. Yeah, it's very big. And it is coming up next here on Derek and Romaine. VNR 2.0. Well, this time of year, it's so wonderful to relax and hang out by the fire pit and enjoy some time with friends and family and enjoy a delicious Miller Lite. You know, Miller Lite is great. And the reason for it is that it's a light beer that tastes like a regular beer. It It's not one of those light beers that just tastes like water. It actually tastes like having a beer. You know, and sometimes you have to cut back, right? Like I was talking about earlier in the show today about how I had to stop drinking soda because my doctor said, girl, your sugar's too high. And sometimes you have to cut back even with your drinking. And I think Miller Lite is a great option if you want a light beer that still tastes great and you're going to enjoy. That's right. And not feel filled up. Right. Heavy. Yeah, because nobody wants that. So I say if you're going to have a light beer, have a Miller Lite because you're actually going to enjoy it. Uh, And it is a great way to spend time with friends and uh, relax together uh, and have good times. Yeah, you know, a lot has changed over the last couple of years, Derek. We've got in every aspect of our life, we've seen change. But with the Miller Lite, you could drink it and you still enjoy it the same way every time. It's it really is a great way of enjoying a beer with your friends. So uh, the next time you're hanging out, you should go and you should get yourself a Miller Lite. And let me tell you, uh, it has never been easier to get it. Did you know that you can get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, Derek, if you visit MillerLite.com slash DNR? Or you can find it pretty much anywhere uh, that sells beer. That's right. That's MillerLite.com slash DNR. That's M-I-L-L-E-R-L-I-T-E dot com slash DNR. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. It's Miller Lite time, and you're going to enjoy it. Before I began with DNR, I felt hopeless about myself in a way. I didn't know what career path I really wanted, but thanks to DNR, I now know far more than I ever thought I would. Hey, my name is Noir, and I got this amazing internship at DNR thanks to the Unity Works program at Alley Forney Center. While I was here, I got to do and learn so many things like editing, soundboard use, and even side channels. Heck. I even got to host my own intern show with fellow interns, and it was genuinely a blast. So, if you want to help young adults like myself get awesome opportunities like this during the season of giving, make sure you go on down to dnrstudios.com and go down to the rainbow donate button. You cannot miss it. 
thank you to all who helped make opportunities like this possible. Let's keep these good times going for the future and give the youth amazing opportunities like this again. Farewell. Nailed it! Uh, Derek here, along with Romaine, and joining us now in studio, it is singer and performer Kevin Aviance, and you can check him out on the web at houseofaviance.net, and Kevin Aviance official on Instagram, and he has a YouTube channel too, Kevin Aviance there. <laughs> Kevin, it's so nice to have you here in our studio. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's hot here in New York, uh, but uh, you are used to uh, hot, because uh, <laughs> you have performed... Uh, Many hot shows, uh, many, many times. And I actually uh, saw you years ago um, at, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Arena. I might have been high uh, in the 90s. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it's one, uh, uh, 1990. And uh, anyway, it's lovely to have you here. <laughs> These two. Okay. So, yeah, thank you for having me here. Did, uh, did you like the show? Uh, I did. I had a fantastic time. Uh, it was great. I was uh, living in L.A. and I visited New York and um, I was uh, uh, like visiting uh, friends. And um, uh, yeah, I had a great time. But I was staying. This was uh, so I uh, it was at Arena. I had a great time. You came on uh, like halfway through the evening. It was fantastic. Great show uh, there on the dance floor. And then I. Um, uh, I had to go back. We were staying at the uh, Milford Plaza in Times Square, what we had called the Mildew Plaza, because it just smelled <laughs> real mildewy. And uh, anyway, I left the club, and I was in the cab, and I was on my way back, and the listeners have heard this story before, but once I got into the cab, we were like going up to Midtown, and I realized, like, wait, how much money do I have? And the taxis did not take credit cards at that point, and I realized I only had like $5 or something in cash. So as soon as the meter got to like $4, I was like, drop me here <laughs> at three in the morning and I will walk the rest of the way. That's a New York story. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, fortunately, I was in like the garbage district, so it was not too bad, <laughs> but even still, uh, yes. Uh, but uh, you have been performing here in New York uh, for quite some time. 92. Uh, and uh, the New York and the nightlife scene and everything, it has changed a lot. Oh, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Just a teeny bitty, bitty bit. Yeah. Yeah, poor thing. I mean, I remember a time when you could go out every night. Yes. Like four different places. Mm -hmm. And still go home, change, and then go to after hours. Yeah. On Wednesday. Right. So on Woo! a Wednesday night, what time would you get home on Thursday morning? Because I know, you, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, I remember when I first came to New York. Like when you're young and you're in New York City and you have. And just the only reason I got home on Friday because I had to work Friday night. Yeah. And so I had to change outfits. You know what I mean? It was kind of like I already changed. Like you know, I used to go out with three or four outfits and one little bag that you know, kind of like fold or get a new outfit at the bodega or whatever. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and then um yeah fun times man that was the that was the life of new york but now new york has changed yeah. although i have high hopes i'm curious to see what you think so new york got what i call disneyfied where everything just became very mainstream less edgy you know, i was living on 43rd street when they got a little dignified, um, the Disney fied yeah which, um because that building went up across the street on 40 Third or forty third between eighth and ninth. Yeah, I used to live on that block. I was uh, subletting apartment from a porn star there, and um, I remember the hookers that used to be on the street. Right, they were wearing, they weren't in hooker clothes anymore. They were in like skirts, mm -hmm. like the little like Britney skirts, like the little school skirts, mm -hmm. and white shirts. Yep, and pigtails and like. Hi, like that. They weren't like, you know, these bad bitches that they used to be, like, watching the neighborhoods, you know what I mean? Even the hookers went upscale. I know, but... It's outrageous. But since the <laughs> pandemic, New York has gotten... Raunchy. Raunchy, edgy, a little scary, frankly. Listen, I was I went to the East Village one night, and I they had set up, like, this, like, fortress on one of the buildings, and... By the time I walked from one end to the other, I couldn't keep my eyes off of these people because it was so amazing. It was beautiful, first of all. It was like this, this, this art 
installation, you know? But they had taken a shower, had sex, and did their drugs all at the same time. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah. All out in the open in front of everybody. And I was like this. Yeah. Like, people didn't care. They were just, like, going for it. They didn't want to be in, they didn't want to be in the... Um, the, in the Homeless shelters. They said it was really bad there. Right. That's exactly true. So it's so it feels like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like New York has an opportunity right now for a renaissance. Like, a, let's return to the good old days where things were actually interesting in New York City, where there were edgy people, where there were tastemakers doing things, where some of the boring people have moved back out to the suburbs. They're in Jersey. They're in Connecticut. They're not in the city right now. I feel very attacked by this line of questioning. I mean, I moved out to Jersey, <laughs> so I hear you. But do you think there's a chance that New York City might get cool again? You know, Brooklyn is turning it out. They are. They are like, it's no joke in Brooklyn. And these kids are like edgy and they're flamboyant and they're like, you know, it's a little much for me. It really yeah. is. Sometimes really? It, yeah, for you? Little, for me, it's a little much because I want to see it. I want to see it more like refined. Okay. And they, could, they can't be bothered with that. Mm. Like a, a drag queen bought in flip flops. You know what I mean? A drag queen in flip flops? I'm not I'm just saying, girl. No. They're, they're very relaxed. Yeah. That, I mean. Where are their standards? I was going to say, where are their godmothers? There's relax and then there's beach day. <laughs> like, what is that? No, but it's not about that for them. It's more like about their realness and with who they are and what they're portraying at that time. It's not so much about the aesthetic. The aesthetic they are accepting. They are, they're, 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 that's what they are. You know what I mean? Right. And it's just such a different, day, different time. The things that they worry about is totally different than what I guess I worry about. You know what I mean? Sure. And, um, yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. So speaking of Renaissance, uh, Beyonce <laughs> recently uh, dropped a new way. album. Romaine, I'm, I thought you were like laying that down. I picked it back up. <laughs> um, and uh, you were surprised to discover that uh, your own work was sampled yeah. uh, on Beyonce's album. Yeah. So tell us a bit about uh, how you found out about that and how you felt. Uh, a dear friend of mine uh, sent me the uh, track listing of one of the songs and I saw my real name on there, Eric Sneed, and they spelled it S N E D. I was like, "What is this?" And then so Jarrell Black's name next to it, and which is my producer with the guy who I'm partners with with, with, with the uh, group. And um, I was sh I was like, "What is this?" He said, "Oh, that's Beyonce's song. It's one of the songs from the track listing from Beyonce's album. Whose album is it? Today <laughs> from Beyonce's." I said, "Stop fucking with me," you know. Like, <laughs> whereas that paid me. I was just like, "Whatever, honey." I guess that. Three o'clock in the morning, two thirty in the morning. I can't I don't know what time because I got the song. My phone had been ringing like crazy, or the, the messages were crazy. Things were just going crazy, and I looked at the phone. I turned the song on, and I hear the song, and then it goes. Oh, I, I passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Get back up, my friends. Like you know, are you all right? And I said. He says, you're not going to believe this. And I play the song again, and I gagged. I could not believe. First of all, she brings it in the song, and every word has a meaning. And so she uses me, she uses it to set up the song, and then she uses me as a response to what, you know, it takes a thousand, it takes a, it takes a billion to make a cunty, cunty. I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is going, what is going, I could not believe, that's all I could say, what is going on? What is this happening? Why is this, what is going on here? I could not believe what I was hearing. And then my girlfriend's at the end of it, while Renee, who's no longer with us, and she with the Honey song, because two songs went, and she goes, um, Miss Honey, Miss Honey, Miss Honey, to end the track. And I'm just like, I didn't know what to do. I just played it again, and I'm like, can't believe it. And I said, wait a minute, let me just listen to this whole album. Let me see what's going on here. Because you just don't do a track like this just to do it. And I'm listening to the album, and I just started crying more, and I'm just like, and I'm like, do you, this, this, where does she have time to do all this? Where does she have time to put these songs together? Because it's all samples, and I'm a house, I'm a dance record person. So I'm like, she got the sample from that dead person. This, 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 this. And it's amazing to see my whole life flash before my eyes well, doing this whole thing. And it sounds like this album really is a love song to the gay community, and in particular, uh, the black gay community. It is a direct love song to the black gay community, and I gagged. Wow. Because never in my life, being uh, being black, and gay, a faggot, a queen, whatever, 
I like my divas. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I know yeah, them yeah. all. I love Diane. All of them. I love them all. I've been all the country. I am a freak. Asian, black, white. You know, I'm a diva. I love my divas, especially the black ones. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm there. I'm there. You know, I know them all. Operas. Da, 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 da. Never once. They tried really hard. They 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 they've held us up there and been there. Don't get me wrong, but I've never seen anything like this before. Even yeah. with Madonna. I mean, Madonna. She did a great job. Sure. Don't get me wrong. She, she's fierce. She did what she you know, but never like this. Yeah. Like whole career, <laughs> like boom. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's uh, taking a chance. It's taking yeah. a huge chance. Sure. Oh, well, I also I feel like you know we're we're in a conversation about. Uh, you know, where the line is around honoring other communities and when it tips over into cultural appropriation, right? And so this is a big conversation and it can be a delicate line. It That line is different for different people. Some people are fine with some things. Some people are not fine with other things. What I, uh, what I get out of uh, what Beyonce is trying to do here, and obviously she's the only one who knows what her own intention is, but... Uh, I think that for people who are engaged with music, uh, all music is building on the work of other people. And I, you know, right now with technology, we are able to better sort of sample other artists and everything. But if you go back through popular music of the last 100 years, it is pulling from previous decades, other artists, other genres, other works that have inspired people that that have been a foundation for other work that they have done going forward. And so I really feel like what Beyonce is doing here is uh, taking the, the, the work that has been done in past decades and highlighting how this has been a foundation for what she has been doing. Uh, and that she could not be here without these other artists that had come before her. And I felt Mm -hmm. uh, this way uh, with her Coachella performance. And I know that uh, you had talked about this in your Billboard interview about how even though she didn't go to a historically black college, here she was honoring what had come what had come out of these movements at these historically black colleges and how that informed her and her work uh and that she wanted to like bring that full circle and i feel the same thing here that she's just saying look all these people who put in the work in the clubs and everything it all laid the foundation for the pop music that I'm able to create now and that she wants to fuse that together and show how it all has come together in one piece to to go little deeper with that i remember doing this that there's a there's a circuit uh in the uh i believe colleges of the queer studies okay sure and i am a study and queer and then one of these in these things so i've traveled um done these tours right and because of dr jose Minos from nyu um i'm one of his subjects in his books right so i'm at um dartmouth and i they tell me about the different kind of classes that they have that, and they have one about Beyonce, and it's about her blonde hair, her having blonde hair. And in in a world, this world, you know, why does this black woman have this blonde hair? And da-da-da, what does it mean? Da-da-da-da-da-da. At the end of the day, okay, this woman has done something in the black community that no one has ever done yet, that needed to be done. And that was to take black gay people and black gay black trans people and going like this put their arm put her arm around them hug them and to put them in her breast basically i got you let's go here and let's do this because they're not going to touch me they're not Mm going to tell me what i can't can't do they're not going to tell me i did not do this there's nobody here i don't care who you like her or not you, you're not going to touch B or going to read B about this. You know what I mean? And because she, this is what she's feeling. This is what she's always felt, apparently, you know, for a very long time. That now that I'm finding out about it, you know, with her uncle and everything like that, and and how thick it is, the awareness in our, my own community that that's been shunned. You know what I mean? People, the 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 girls are being killed. The black girls are being killed. The black the beautiful babies are being killed and and like uh black gay men are being attacked and I'm one of them that was attacked you know what I mean so I I it's a lot to take on for for somebody like her to do mm-hmm. that you know and to to risk a lot for it but you know what thank you you know like 
It made me strong, like really strong. And I had no problems. I walk around in a thong and a bathing suit and call it a day with a person since I was can't remember, <laughs> girl. But in recent years, that's not been my story. You know right. what I mean? I've been beaten. I've been almost killed. I have, I, I'm not walking like, you know, I do take some chances and stuff and whatever case would be. I'm on the subway doing my Instagram and I've got to work. But, you know, I'm now feeling like I'm 23 again. You know what I mean? Where I had no fear. You know what I mean? Um, but I was innocent then. It was different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A little bit different. Now it's like, I kind of know, but it still feels different. You know what I mean? I mean, these interviews and everything I'm doing, and these, I mean, I've had a huge career, and I'm very proud of it, you know? But I've not done all the things that I, this thing has given me. You know what I mean? And so, so let's talk about uh, going to the party and with, with Beyonce. Can I talk about that yet? I mean, I'd like to talk about that. Because that, I mean, so here's someone that obviously is phenomenal and people love and, you know, she's queen. So you get to go. She's sampled your song. And now you get to go and meet her. Well, this is the second time I've met her. Okay. And I don't think she remembered the first time because she threw a party at the Roxy when she first got her first song came out, mm-hmm. and that's and most of the other girls. Everybody came through to the Roxy to promote their new single, yep. or whatever. I remember those and days. She came through with her whole crew and her mom, and she, they she got wind that um, something about some racial drama there, and she invited every black drag queen to come meet her. Amazing. And she had a little party right before she went on, and so we all everybody was there, you know. And I was like, why are they doing this? It's like, well, you know, I mean, like, yeah, but. It's, I worked there. I knew what what was accepted and what was not. You know, just to, you know, I'm not trying to start anything, but it was some drama there, and she didn't care, and she had to, everybody come and meet her. You know, amazing. And I gave I brought her a pair of earrings in this this box, and they were like this long, and they were like big chunk jewels like uh, Barbara Sorrell had done for me, and uh, and I gave them to her, and so that was the first time I met her. Okay. Know? But this is like, this is B, after that, Cecily's child, okay? Yeah. So now we're moving like seven albums later, and she is Beyonce. I mean, she is just like, she's not this little girl anymore. She's a woman, you right. know? And one of those beautiful persons, and she's so beautiful. It's like incredibly beautiful. But she was so gracious. She was so sweet and so nice and, and so like, I felt it, and I'm like crying and everything, but she was just like, you know, She's saying thank you, 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 like the whole time, and I'm just like, girl, thank you. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you know. But it was it was one of these things where I just I couldn't really speak. I was just like, she has this thing around her, and it it is not like it's not like like I yeah I adore her and I live for her and all that stuff. La 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 la. Okay. But this woman, she hardly had any makeup on. She had makeup on. Yeah. She's not that girl. This dust. This this. Sasha Fierce girl, like it's something else going on with her, and, and something I, and she's forty, she's 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 a woman, you know what yeah. I mean, and she's she's just like this, she's she's good, you know, and she's she she knows what she's doing, and it's so empowering, and to know that I come from that, is even better, you know. How does it feel to have been inspired by all of these divas for so long, right, and then to know that you and your work has inspired her? I mean, that's got to be like one of those feelings. I I can't even imagine, but that's got to be incredible. It means everything, huh? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I could feel that. Especially because... You you grew up in a time in New York City where it was really fucking hard. But I had fun. I yeah. mean, it wasn't like hard. <laughs> it but wasn't, it was hard. It wasn't it was like, I guess it was hard, but it was like, girl, I just, I just kept slaying. I just yeah. kept having a good time and just like, you know, it was, you know, they told me I can't go somewhere. Like, what the hell? You're going to have my way. Like, are right. you kidding me? Like, you know, I'm keeping on things. Move. You know what I mean? It was very that. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, people were a little scared of me back in those days and stuff like that. I was a little, a little but you had to be. You had <laughs> right. to be a little hard, you know, and look and come through, you know. Um it's I don't know. I mean, I just didn't look bad. I didn't, I didn't regret it. I don't have any regrets. I mm-hmm. never really like, you know, if you did something wrong, you paid for it. I didn't want to do anything wrong, so but I did I love the dance floor and 
whatever I did, I did it on the dance floor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was just, just such a different time, you know? Yeah. Time. Um, yeah. Now, how do you feel uh, about how uh, mainstream uh, drag and trans culture has become? Because really, you know, the success of RuPaul's Drag Race, I, you know, it's so, it's funny to me to think about it because on the one hand, it feels very normal of like, well, we, you know, we've had drag performers and lip syncing, all this stuff has been going on for decades. Like we've all known about it, whatever, but seeing, you know, uh, 15 year old kids waiting outside of bars to meet drag queens and whatever else. And like it being on national TV and covers of magazines, like I just finished doing, uh, I just got back from Montreal. I just did 40,000 people in a, at the Olympic Stadium, I DJed the whole thing. I DJed the opening for all the RuPaul Drag Race girls worldwide. Right. Okay? Wow. So these queens, first of all, I, this is the first thing I've done with the RuPaul Drag Race people. So that's a really good thing because, you know, to be honest with you, if you're anywhere relevant in this, in this world of drag or anything, it's because Ru. I mean, Ru right. has really... Bravo. Thank you for saving drag. I mean, she really put drag in another world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, to the older girls that have been here before that and everything like that, um, she has given jobs to people. And, you know, I have not, I, you know, Rubar, we have a little saucy uh, relationship. That's fine. I know she respects me. I respect her. I look up to her. And, and I can hope she sees me now. But um, Rue's very, um, I see what he does. I see how he does it. And I'm, it, it's really fierce. Now, 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 it's, now it's, the, it's the worldwide thing and seeing all these queens that I've just met um, from, from France, from, from Belgium, from da, 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 all these queens that are so sweet and so nice. And they are babies. They are babies. I'm talking about babies. <laughs> they are so young and like, like, like what they're experiencing in drag, they're, they're experiencing in all the drag stuff, but do, making a thousand dollars to a couple thousand right. dollars a gig. You know what I mean? Which is like, Unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you're lip syncing and dragging. But bravo for you. And they are, you know, still going through the drag moments. You know what I mean? That and that's what I I no longer don't I used to be like a little like, mm, girl, it's not drag. It's not drag. <laughs> this is like cotton candy drag. This is not real drag. No, they do real drag. And I'm real impressed with all of them. They are they're artists. They have they really think about their numbers. Even though they do their numbers over and over again from city to city, da da da. But you know what? So did I. You know what I mean? I I, I remember one time in my I did a tour. I was a, before I started singing. I would do tour of albums. Okay. So for some reason, someone saw me do the, the I did Natalie Cole's live album as a thing. I that thing booked me around the country. Okay. <laughs> hey. <laughs> And like I was booked, girl. It was crazy. I mean, she's doing coke, everything. Living out, cutting the whole story. So it was like that was my thing. It was like the Natalie Cole live album, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Me, I I don't know how many CDs I've done with that 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 album. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, now mind you, the clubs are like they're, they're little pubs or whatever. <laughs> but people came, and you know, that's how I, you know developed my um. My audience was doing these, these album tours, you know, it's hilarious. That's fun. But could you have imagined when you first came to New York in the early 90s that 30 years later, this would, you know, that the New York City nightlife scene would be over, but drag would be this mainstream in America's living room phenomenon? So I always was brought up that this too will pass. Right. So I, that it's always in my head, like, you know, this too will pass. I had no idea that this was that was going to be past seen like that the, the, the drug like the the drugs of the druggets of the dragons world and yeah. all this stuff to be this like I mean you have to see the fans it's crazy yeah it's like they're going to see Michael Jackson yeah it's crazy like I know it was Gay Pride in Montreal but you understand every girl came on. Crying, gagging, carrying on. It was amazing. Uh, but what I what I love about this sort of uh, modern drag phenomenon is all of us over the years have seen a drag queen where I just feel like if the audiences now saw them, they would faint dead away. Like they would not even believe uh, it happened. Because like, uh, you know, and those drag queens, 
like came and went in obscurity and did not have an opportunity so, to be so on performance TV. Performance art started yeah. in New York City, right? That's yeah. Performance art started at the pyramid. Not, not, that's where performance art, period, in the art world started. Now, there are drag artists out here that are so innovative and so incredible that they would never make Drupal Falls Drag Race like this. No, they're, they're, they would never because they would just never. You can't do those things on TV. Right. But those, if it wasn't for those people, though, those girls would not be able to do what they're doing right now. You know what I mean? Totally so, true. So there, there, has, there has to be somewhere, this, there has to be a synergy from, from Ruse to these girls before these girls go away, you know what I mean? Or die or whatever the case may be. Because unfortunately, we, our generation is brought up on us. We were not brought up on anybody. We had no mentors. They all died. Right. right. So it's kind of like we were out here trying to handbook it all and trying to figure out what's going on here. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, if I had a leather daddy, you know, a real a real leather, because people used to mentor people back in the day. Mm-hmm. They used to take young kids and used to mentor them and say, no, you're not doing this. Only because you're doing this. And we didn't have that. We were like heavy drug heads. You know what I mean? Keep doing, ah, ah, ah. So to a friend that was just like, we really Russian roulette our lives. Like, like, like it was nothing, you know? And, you know, what I'm finding out about Brooklyn is that they're doing what they are doing. What they used to do before the AIDS hit. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm really, really into that. I'm really into people nurturing and all that stuff, especially gay people, because we don't, you don't know. You don't, you don't know something until someone shows you. And apparently, you know, people are being showed through this damn phone how to do things. And, it, you know, <laughs> it's like, girl, where do you go from there if you go there? If you go right. there already, where do you go from there? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, they don't even have that time where, you know, you don't even, I don't know. Maybe you didn't go through this. But there's the gay stages. You know what I mean? Your first gay stage. If you start at eight and there's only 20, girl. Yeah. It's rough. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you decipher what's good and bad after a while? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, and unfortunately, gay people, we, we have a lot in, in for us to do as we please. But, you know. There's, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, consequences, you know, of going that far or just going being that person or, you know. Do you worry that the gay marriage and the lots of gay people having children and all of these, I'm going to call them like, essentially we're being normalized like heterosexuals at this point. Do you worry that that is going to take away some of the fabulousness that is the gay community? I do worry. I I worry that um. You know my art. I when I do my art, I always say if I can touch somebody out there in the boonies, you know that's like me mm-hmm. to come to the city and be anything, then my job is done, right? Unfortunately, with internet and everything, they can do whatever they want to in the boonies, and they can act just as crazy and <laughs> and be a star out there. So you know, um, I think that I think what it is is that the it. it the babies have to dream, that's all, and yeah. want to be more, you know what I mean? Or, and then not be, know that there's an out, that they don't have to sit where they are, and then there's a, there's a whole other family that's welcome to, to welcome them and to see them, you know what I mean? I think that's, that's the message that needs to be, to be taken to them because they're just sitting wherever they are, and they're not, they're not really moving or migrating, you know what I mean? It's kind of weird, you know? It's like they're just settling for what they are and where they are, and that's how it is, and they'll somebody from some show comes over and says, oh, so you're gay? You know, okay, you can do whatever you want. And then everybody in their na- town knows they're gay. And, you know, but they're not, they, you can see they are very unhappy because they have nobody else they're gay with them. And it's like, this is 2020. Like, what are you talking about? Like, get out, go to France, go to, go to meet some people. Like, uh, you know, but I don't know. Like, this is ratings, I don't know. This is the ratings. I mean, I just feel like, I, because I agree with you. I think because we are so connected by the internet, uh, we no longer feel the need to physically connect in the same spaces in the clubs, in the you know gay ghettos, gay, or, yeah. gay like the gay neighborhoods where we all could get together, and all of a sudden this creativity starts to flourish. Right. And I agree, it it worries me about young 
gaze, you know. I couldn't wait until the second I graduated from high school, I moved out of my parents' house, and I immediately moved into a neighborhood in a big city because Girl, I had to be around my people. I was eight years old when I, when I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted yeah. to get out of that house and just, like, get out. And I, went to, I remember going to see Grace Jones, and I made my mom... Get tickets at Scandals International in Richmond, Virginia to go see Grace Jones at Scandals International. And she took me. And I would, uh, when I went to this club, I was like this. Oh, hell yes. And I was 10 years old or something like that. I was like, girl, you can tell me more. You can tell me anything more after that. I was like, yeah. I no longer wanted to be in school. I no longer wanted to be this king of my friends. I no longer wanted to be that part of that. I, no way. And I didn't. I was like, mm mm. I just can't. No. Mm -mm. I'll stay in the basement. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I just couldn't be bothered. I was just like, the, the things just changed for me. I saw Grace Jones, then I saw a picture of Boy George. Forget it. That was it for me. That was done. And do you think done. your mom realized right then and there? She knew. She was like, you know, you make your bed, you lay in it. You know, <laughs> I'll hold your hand, but you know, don't don't go too far. Don't. And you know, of course, I did, and whatever it <laughs> could be. But you know, and she knew. But it. it she was so cool, though. She was really like, she protected me. Thank God. My dad was like, oof, rough. Rough. Uh, but you were the sixth of eight kids, right? right? And Romaine is the eighth of eight. Uh, Are you the baby? I'm yeah, the Romaine's the baby. baby. I know, the worst. Rotten. You damn right I was. <laughs> <laughs> no middle child bullshit for I was going to say, do you consider yourself more of a middle or more of a baby? Well, the baby in my family is, the, is half our baby. So we found out recently that my mother um, fathered the child. Oh. So, um, which is like, oh, girl. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> I was like, so that explains everything to me because I just don't want my dad now treated my sister like a piece of shit. And now we know why. And it makes total sense. And it's just funny that my mom would go to her grave with that like, little secret. Like, wow. You know? And my sister, you know, she found out. Huh. She would visit the church, the old church we used to go to. And the girls there were snickering about it. Oh. And so she went to my aunt and said, why are these girls throughout the last 10 years, why are they snickering? What is going on? What are you not telling me? And she's like, what are you talking about? And she said, I want to know right now. I want to know right now. Something is going on, and trust me, I feel it. What's going on? And she said, sit down, girl. I told her. <gasps> Damn. Like, Damn. That's crazy. Oh See, I thought my family and they told me that, I was like, ooh, mama, you did it, girl. <laughs> I said, ooh. I was like, I was loving it. I love that story. I was like, well. That's we'll amazing. Get it, mama. That's right. Uh, well, Kevin, we've loved having you with us. Uh, it's been great to catch up. And congratulations Thank on so all much. that is happening uh, around this latest album. And uh, I'm sure people will be seeing you all across the country. Call it a hunch. That's right. <laughs> uh, our thanks to Kevin Aviance for being with us. Uh, you can check him out on the web, houseofaviance.net. Kevin Aviance official on Instagram. And oh, a new single all too called I'm Back. So. Oh, nice. And a new single, I'm Back. Uh, be sure to check it out as well. Thank you so much for being with us. Can't get enough of the show? Follow them on Twitter at DNR Show or like them on Facebook. And don't forget to tell your friends to subscribe to DNR 2.0 at DerekandRomaine.com.